Even the president is talking about food shortages now. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. What about fertilizer shortages? Hay shortages. Food shortages. Diesel rationing. Psh, all going on. It's going to get worse, people. You want true security in troubled times? Grow your own food. Raise your own animals. Stockpile food when you can, while you can. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm out here in the pouring down rain working on my garden, planting, building, organizing, making stuff look nicer even like this. That is all now rocked around it. So it looks nice. It doesn't look like just a pile of dirt. And it's planted in zucchini, yellow summer, I call them crookneck squash, and the little white scallop squash. So get out and do these things. And please give a thumbs up, share the videos, subscribe. Let's get on to some other things. When food becomes short, this becomes currency and the bank. <laughs> All this stuff growing. Yes, grow food. It is like investing money in the bank, seriously. We put 50 something more onions in here and 14 more garlic and we're planting. We're planting, 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 planting and making things look nicer. So it's money in the bank. Seriously, people, as food gets short, as things get worse, it is literally like growing money. Here's one thing we're doing in preparation of getting more um, stuff planted is this and this. We're going through that dirt, we're getting out all the rocks, all the bad stuff, all the little roots and stuff like that. Throwing the roots out, putting the rocks in here, washing them off, and then we'll put them on a path like I'll show you in just a sec. Like this. Use them to make create paths between your raised bed. Or, this is my other work in progress. I took up the containers in my wife's little uh, herb area here and I'm building this enclosure around it using logs. So it'll look really cool. And then using the rocks all in the middle and around it. And here's another pile getting ready. Yeah. So this is, take this stuff seriously, people. Working on getting more calories planted. Here are 22 potato slices with multiple eyes per that's sitting out here. We'll still leave them sitting outside for, I don't know, four, six hours-ish, maybe eight hours to heal. You always want to do that and so that when you put them in the ground, they're much less prone to rot. So that's a bunch more potatoes about to go on the ground too. Right now I'm harvesting some garlic greens. You can see a bunch of them right there. So what I'm doing is basically I'm looking around here, see any of the ends that are like that, or like this, dried out. I'll cut those off, trim the ends off, putting them in here so we can dehydrate, put them in a mason jar and put in our pantry for use after I dice them all up. And I'm going through, you can see all the little, the older dead ones. You can see this area here, how nice and pretty it is, how it's all cleaned up. I just cleaned that. Also did the same thing on the onions, trimmed them up. So I'm just going through here and keeping them trimmed, keeping them looking nice and getting all the ones off of there that don't need to be there. And like I said, I'm going to dehydrate them and we'll use them for seasonings, for cooking and everything. Keeps them nice and cleaned up and it produces food and they'll continue producing. So it's a wonderful win-win situation. Done cleaning up the garlic. Looks really nice, it's all nice and cleaned up really well, and look at all the greens I got. Yep, just a pair of scissors, some patience, and a little bit of time. It's kind of tedious, takes a little while, but you see the clippings laying all over there, I just leave them in the raised bed. It'll just help compost the soil, right? And then I trim the green onions, like I showed you over here, and I got a big thing of green onions. So green onions and garlic, about to be dehydrated. I also trimmed up these green onions, so yeah, that is I guess the first official harvest of 2022. 
However, I did just realize I need to come over and trim these onions. So I'm going to come over here and trim these onions. Then I'm going to dice up the onions and the garlic and put them, um, I think I'm just going to throw them in the oven, low temperature baking sheet. Then when they're fully dried out, put them in a mason jar, put them in the pantry, and use them to make yummy food. So the oven is now preheating for 200 degrees. I'm just going to take some of these, mm -hmm. start off with the garlic, and I'm just going to dice them up, well, dice them up the easy way <laughs> with scissors and make a bunch of diced garlic so that we can throw them in the oven and dehydrate them. Yeah. Low temperature for, I don't know, I just kind of check on it to see how long it takes. But that's all you got to do. Here I'll get another bunch. Really simple. Just grab a bunch after you wash them off and just dice them up. You can use a knife on a chopping board. I find this a lot easier, so this is the way I do it. And it, I mean, it really doesn't matter. You could you can dehydrate them whole if you want. I just like chopping them up like this. They dehydrate quicker, and you know it's just more effective. I feel so. This is the way I do it. And my family loves garlic, don't we, baby? Yeah. Yeah, we sure love garlic. Also onions. And onions. Yep. So then basically I'll get this tray full, um, I will cut up a bunch more, spread them out really well like that, throw them in the oven, low temperature, a couple hours or so, take them out, and then let them sit for a little bit, throw them in a mason jar, and good to go, throw them in the pantry. So that's the next stage of kind of what we're doing today. So I decided to add more gruesome artichokes to this area. So. From there, there's like one row, two rows, three rows. From right there, the disturbed earth, all the way down to that disturbed earth there and there. So all through here, there's about, oh, I'd say 30, 40, probably 40-ish um, drew some artichokes there. That will be sustainable food. That will be stuff that we don't probably ever harvest until we actually need it. That will be like our emergency food supply, just sustainable, and that's the way to do it. I mean, seriously. Calories growing everywhere. If you need it, use it. If you don't, a situation like this, the tubers will stay in the ground, and they'll just grow back the next year. So that, you know, that's a win-win in my book. We also added 22, potatoes. 22 potatoes to this raised bed. Sorry. In conjunction with the potatoes are still on the ground from last year so it has left those in the ground it's okay baby girl just remember raise your hand we left those in the ground so we should grow a bunch of potatoes in here <laughs> and then if you guys saw this area it looked like a pile of dirt before I found rocks around the property and made it look pretty <laughs> no actually I think it really looks nice and that is now planted in um, zucchini yellow crookneck squash and those little white scallop squash. I forget, I think I might have mentioned that already. Yes, baby girl. Also, my sand pit actually has sand in it. Yeah, I'll show you I'll show you that in just a sec. It doesn't actually just have dirt. That's true. Okay. This is our newest raised bed has um, cherry tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, and beefsteak tomatoes planted in it. <laughs> and we also got the other um, fig tree put in so there's fig tree number one and over here is fig tree number two yes. and yes I know I need to tackle this grass <laughs> as well as low priority items so fig tree number one and fig tree number two yeah. yep we got a lot going on don't we baby girl yeah. all right then on to over here I want to show you yes the little sand play area actually has sand in it now. I got four bags of sand, so 200 pounds of sand, threw it in there. What I'm actually gonna do is build a, uh, I'm gonna get a two by 12 by 12 and then cut it so it'll be a uh, three foot by three foot box 
and then I'll fill that all the way up with sand. So the kiddo's got something to play in because that's important also. Morale is important, giving a place. But remember also, if you're going to do something like this outside, um, neighborhood cats and um, fur needles from the tree right above it falling into it. So I'm going to build a lid for it yeah. once I get it done. And then that way, uh, we'll just put the lid on it when we're not using it. It'll keep it dry. It'll keep all the needles out of it. It'll keep the cats out, stuff like that. Because there's just, you know, there's random cats running around around here. So, um, and our little area here that I worked on recently added these plants. They look really well. I don't, or really good. I don't see any um, wilting, anything like nope. that. So, um, as well as the, the huckleberries transplanted from the woods are looking really good. Uh, beauty rock I put in there. Um, even these little crawler things that some of you guys probably know what they are. I don't know what they are. I don't even care what they are. They were just, they're, they'll take over the area if they live, which I want. I want this to look like a Garden of Eden. So I don't see any wilting on any of these plants. So it looks like they're doing very well. I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, so that's wrap on that. We'll talk about some other things. Okay, I know, that turned into just showing you the garden again, what I've been doing and everything like that. Yes, because that's what I'm doing. I'm actually out doing the things. I'm actually out working hard every day, almost all day long. Um, the onions, the garlic, the drusum artichokes, the planting, making things look better around here, building new um, planters, stuff like that all the time. It's a constant, it's a work in progress. But, like I talked about earlier, it's like money in the bank. I am planting and setting up money trees, things that produce that, you know, I'd rather pretty soon it's going to be more valuable. It's going to be better to have these things than these things because these things in the raised beds, that will be worth a lot more than this paper fiat currency, um, especially when it collapses. We've seen spikes in the commodities market. I mean, commodities, anything tangible that you can put your hands on is going crazy. Precious metals, there's a lot going on in the world. We've got shortages. Like I said, even the president's talking about shortages um, in a land where pff, there should never be, seriously. I look around everywhere I drive, people's property, their yards, their, everywhere I look, I just, man, you can plant all over there you could plant half i mean if you planted half of it if you planted a quarter of all the places that i see and that i look at and say wow that would be cool you could plant a lot there um if they if people planted a quarter of that we would be producing so much food i mean i, I just encourage you guys all to grow your own food there's a lot going on in the world today and um it's just seriously security. I know, and I talk about this a lot because this is what I do. Um, I don't mean to be repetitive. I had a comment um, I saw, oh, all your videos are about the same thing. Well, yeah, they're about prepping. They're about preparedness. They're about real sustainability. Sorry if the camera's shaking. I don't have my, uh, I don't have a tripod. Let me see if I can just set it here on the, uh, the post. It's, I, I try to talk about things and show you things that will actually help you. There's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of good stuff, some stuff that's not as good, but, you know, there's a lot to preparedness. I really like, and I'm heading in the direction, obviously, of long-term sustainability. I feel that's very important. Stockpiling goods is also important. Um, just a sec. Which way is the camera facing? To me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. She just had to check and make sure that I wasn't filming in that direction so she could walk over there. Thank you for raising your hand and being polite. Yes, Thank you. Love you. Love you. So that's what we do around here. We prepare. We do the best we can. We work hard. We play hard. And we have fun. We love each other. So anyway, please subscribe. Hit the like button. You know, do all those things. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.